we got a bad two speed compressor here Bristol benchmark let's see if we can figure out why it went bad hmm a little bit of lint a little bit more lint mm-hmm a whole lot of lint cleans off easily but that dryer vent there it's got to get moved you would think it was far enough away but apparently this corner is turning into a lint magnet so the reason why I wanted to show this video though was that's an expensive compressor it's out of warranty the unit's 11 years old that compressor cost more than a new unit of a single speed so what I'm gonna do is we still got four more years on design life on this equipment it's high-end Bryant which is the Bryant evolution same thing as a carrier infinity so I'm gonna swap out with a Copeland single speed compressor so I'll show that I'm gonna check if the oils burnt by looking at the oil also smelling it odor which I didn't smell any odor yet so I don't think it's burnt these compressors just like to scramble themselves and get stuck tempted to open it up now this unit is AC only if this were heat pump you have to have a heat pump control board to do your defrost <clears throat> I would be tempted to just stick in a single speed and just leave it but the unit's gonna think it's a two-speed and it's not gonna get the airflow correct on the furnace so basically what I'm gonna do is just gut all the controls I'll keep that contactor I'll make sure I got the right run capacitor to match the compressor which is a 45 which it says right on it uh, one more thing it's kinda hot today so that's how you work like a boss in the heat use the umbrella tie it off get some shade complicated simple Actually, I don't mind complicated. Got the compressor unsoldered. Pull it out and let's take a look at the oil. Now, once I see the oil, I can determine whether I need a suction line filter dryer. This is why I unsoldered it. Easier to get the oil. It's a heavy compressor, too. They all used to be this heavy years ago. Here's the oil. Pretty clean, tiny yellow tint. doesn't smell burnt at all not the slightest and I think that compressor is notorious for mechanical issues check out this tool the one hand swage So on this job, no need for a suction filter. There's really nothing to filter out. We're actually changing most of the oil anyway with the new compressor. If that had, if that was a burnout, I would definitely do a filter. If the oil had some tint, more tint than that, I would definitely do a filter. Filter cost you about 2% on capacity because there's a tiny uh, suction drop. So if you don't need it, you don't need it. But if you do have a burnout, don't bother with the acid neutralizers or the alcohol cleaners. Uh, they don't really work. The only thing that works on burnouts is suction filters, and that's what the factory recommends for burnouts. Check this out, another tool of pure awesomeness. This uh, muffler here, it's on the discharge line. 
it's really important that it stays because we have this is like four or five millimeter kind of skinny tubes and you don't want to have any vibration on these you want to minimize vibration and that's another thing I'm going to check when it's running I don't want this thing to be shaking when it's running and I wanted to show one other thing here so I'm sanding I sanded the pipe but you inevitably get sand dust which is aluminum oxide inside the pipe so you get a quick easy way I use some co2 go past the dust just blast it out just like that now don't forget the double check you got the right compressor you even do that with the OEM compressor PoE oil we got the right oil make sure we'll do the right capacitor 45 UF high side pressure that's 15 psi times 43 so that's like 600 something pounds. I'll double check on the model number. Got my compressor piped in. Just gotta put the bolts on the feet. Notice it's a universal mount. Pretty much all the compressors have the same footprint. I'm evacuating now. I usually do a triple evacuation. This break for lunch. I use the bucket system for my tools so I have minimal trips to the truck. I even use a foldable wagon. But the best rule, always carry something with you whenever you go back to the truck. It saves you a lot of walking. I swapped the filter dryer there. And you can tell a lot on a system by how blocked up the old filter dryer is. Not blocked at all. But it's good to change it because we want to remove acids, also moisture with that new dryer. So here's the wiring diagram. So it's going to be the digital control for the furnace and then two wire control. Turn on the contactor, one speed, and it looks like they do want an outside air temperature sensor. So I'll use the one that was already on the unit and I'll hook that up to a couple thermostat wires. Don't forget to get a wire connector. These have the round pins. Draw on the compressor there. And I look on the wiring diagram. So my line is going to be red and black wires. And then the capacitor will be the yellow wire. And the capacitor is also going to go to the red. Oil the motor. It's turbine oil. Just add a little bit of oil and helps this motor do much better. There's a sponge in there which holds the factory oil. That's why they don't have taps anymore. Get a lube on there, it helps. Now I'd clean this with a water hose but I'll just make my work area all muddy. So I'll just use a metal brush here. And then the very last thing before I go is I'll wash the unit after it's all together, just with the plain old water hose. Now on the thermostat, you do have to do the install procedure again, because it was looking for the outside digital unit. It didn't find it. So you hold the advanced button for 10 seconds, and then you do the basically go through and you, you know, install equipment and then it searches and then asks you a question like what size is the outside unit three ton single stage that'll handle the fan and then a few other questions filter and stuff so you see I got the sound shield back on wiring is much simplified the pressure switches, we don't need them, just more stuff to break. The unit, if it has high head pressure, there's a relief. If it runs out of Freon, it's not going to cool. Either way, a customer is going to call you. 
Yeah, and most units don't use pressure switches anyway. You can see suction pressure looks good. Subcooling, 16 degrees. They're saying 14 degrees on the tag. And I only ended up putting nine pounds in rather than 9.92. And it's plenty full. Now it makes sense that the system's taking about one pound less than the label because the compressor is quite a bit smaller. It's a scroll compressor now instead of a very large two-speed reciprocating. So I'll make sure I label the correct refrigerant charge. We'll wash Mr. Coil here. So that's it. I'll make sure the customer knows that coil needs to be washed every few years. It would be a good idea to move that dryer outlet to the other side of the house. Everything's good on the unit. Saved about half because a single speed compressor was half the cost of the two speed compressor. And you're going to have the same efficiency, basically 16 sear. And everything looks good. Hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.